welds can get a little bit interesting. I've already pulled the screws out. There's just some screws through the plywood here that all they did is go through this little bit of aluminum, no big deal. Easily replace later. And these are the bits you're after so that you can recarpet them and replace the rotten wood and then recarpet them. But you do find some foam filled stuff that maybe was foam filled after everything and you may have to dig that out of there just so you can get at some connections to disconnect the live well here. But that's not the end of the world. You just dig this out. I mean, you can probably do it by hand. Sure, why not? But uh, a little bit of toolage and being very cautious, you can remove this. And these are the fittings. Your live well is just PVC. It's okay. Now it's riveted through the aluminum that holds it in place. And all those do is just rivet right through there. See if you can see it. And uh, that's what holds the live well in there. So you grab yourself a handy drill. You don't want to drill too big a hole because you do have to replace these rivets. those rivets out and this live well will come free now there's a drain down there too so he's plumbed in somewhere so we do have to get a little bit carried away here and find all that and disconnect everything and once this is free this plastic piece should have enough room since this piece removed as well See, now here's another piece of wood you've got to replace and re-carpet. You always want to save these carpet chunks too, but that'll be another video. Your lid is fine. There's always enough room because they got it in there for you to get it out. This here is our overflow, so you just got to get enough foam out, so you can remove this nut, it's going to hold our overflow drain in right there. This one here is the aerator, that sucks water from the lake and puts it in your live well. He's connected here, got to get that nut off, loosen up these here hose clamps. And then, you got to get this hose off of that barb in there. Once that's accomplished, these bits come right out. And then you're not hooked up to any plumbing anymore. Now the drain, in this scenario, is pretty easy. It's not a stand pipe, it's just a standard drain plug with an overflow. So we pull that nut off and that tube just comes right out the bottom. No big deal. Then we can pull this live well out. I drilled the rivets out. It's not attached to anything anymore except for the plumbing. So we unhooked all the plumbing, disconnected the drain, and the light well is not riveted to this aluminum anymore. It's basically free. Problem is, down here is the drain. Sticks up quite a bit for it to screw on. And the light well has to come up and over that. Well, it doesn't want to on account of all this aluminum that's holding it in place. Even though it's not attached to the aluminum anymore, it's still in the way. Not the end of the world. We got to pull this aluminum face off anyway. Problem is, this bit here is attached with what's called a brazier rivet.
$15 a piece. You want to remove as few of these as you possibly can. Especially when you're trying to do a fishing boat on a budget and just have a nice working good looking boat that isn't a million dollars. So in here, this is the only piece of aluminum attached by them. Goes under all this stuff though. If we remove all these rivets and get under there and get all those out and all the brackets that might be involved and pop all this stuff free, we should be able to pull this whole piece of face out and we have to anyway to get it to floor because just of course the reason we're redoing the boat. So back here I think what we're gonna do is drill out the rivets on the face on the front and back of this and we know there are three of these brazier rivets right here, here, and here on each side that are holding this bit in as well. So, shoot, that's a hundred dollars right there, but this piece has to come out to get re carpeted anyway. So, we'll bite the bullet on that one and then we'll try to leave this bit of aluminum here attached to the boat and save a bunch of money that way and remove this separately so we can pull a live well out. And then we'll be one step closer to the goal. So the current goal is to get down in here so we can get this whole chunk out, get down to the floor. And I thought this top piece would be separate and come up, but it's not, it's all one thing. It folds down over here, it folds down and actually has some screws going into the transom which will give us a chance to check out the transom and make sure we don't have to replace that. And uh, we get those out and the rivets from the outside. We should be able to pull this top off, get down into there and start pulling this off. Hopefully we can leave this bit on. And should be about the same over here. Then we'll go after that bit there, a little rod locker action. And one thing to remember is when you pull this, the seam back here, you got to re that. Otherwise, when water comes in the back, it drips down into your bilge and fills your boat with water. You don't want that. So to keep going here, there's some screws. We I can't even get an eyeball on them. In there, these guys right here that are also holding this whole bit on. And over there, there's no hole to get at them. And it's pretty tough to get any kind of driver in there. I could pull these, but can't get the ones on that side. But the way they put this together is they attached all that. And then the reason that this bit's separate is they put it on after. Now they used little tack welds. They didn't rivet this down. Now it's okay to rivet this afterwards, but we got to get it off now. So if you scrape some of this stuff away, you'll find spots like that where it's been welded. Now you can take a chisel under here and try to bash them, but it's much better if you drill it out a bit first. Find all the spots where it's welded, drill them out, and we'll pull this chunk up and we'll be able to get those screws out. So now once you drill those spots, you don't have to be, you just give it a little pop and it just pops right free. Rather than sitting here banging and smashing and bending, drill that little hole, push it in there, pop, and it's golden. Now we gotta find a few more, I think. Uh, yep, there's one right there. So we got all those welds popped, got this piece off. Where those two screws were. I already took the top one out there. Got one more down there. We're gonna do the same to the other side now. We'll be close to getting this bit out. Then once we get these sides and this back out, the rest is easy peasy. Well, we're almost ready to get the live well out. This side of the sky is completely free. Took a bit more work than we'd like, but we just got two more screws 
and they're way down here this one right here then there's another one back in there even further but we got them out the other side so we'll just keep digging some of this foam out until we can get at it and then we'll be on the home stretch all your plumbing especially if it's laid into foam and boy it's nearly impossible to get out I mean this is just right here for the bilge pump if you needed to replace that hose to the bilge you'd have to almost do all this it's a nightmare make sure all this stuff is good and if not time to order it but now hopefully it's some easier stuff here's this there attached to the floor what do we got going on might have to take all of this foam out and figure out if this is screwed down to the floor or what it is but we want to get this part out and that part out because then the floor and all that front stuff is real easy and we can pile our stuff up figure out what wood we need to replace get that cut re-carpet it just slap it all back together. Okay, Might work. Might work? Might work. Could work. Think I should have thrown it away still? Huh? You still think I should have thrown it away? What? You still think I should have thrown the damn thing away? I think he should have. Yeah? Yeah. You don't think it's going to be a nice little boat? Yeah, for what it is, but <laughs> it's, it's worthless. Oh, come on. As no. a fishing boat, it's worthless. Unless you have a place on a little lake where the waves don't get big and the wind doesn't blow and you don't have to go very far. It'd be perfect for Baby Lake. Yeah, see, there's plenty of places they can trailer this to and just have time to go, think. Anything else? Well, you're thinking Malax, musky fish, well, and all that. Where do the big fish get caught? These guys are thinking, let's go and have a day on the water. There's, there's, yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, it is great. Who's going to pay much for that? So what? So they don't have to pay much. much. They get a nice Nobody wants this boat. kind of thing anymore. No. Everybody wants a Ranger. 250, 300 horsepower. Why? So you can show off to the neighbors? What's $110,000? Boy, howdy, not me. Just in case you didn't catch why we're digging this foam out over here, it's because these side bits the rod locker and the part that the console connects to and this little foam filled area that all the controls and wires run through are foam filled and uh, they're attached with these little screws down here through this leg 
So you gotta get the foam out to that leg and pull the screws out. Good idea to put some tools away, I reckon. Yeah. Kind of have an explosion here, huh? That's the way she goes. Clean it all up right quick. Tear it all apart. We'll see the stringers. 